go into the throne of glory and prayer. As the musician has played softly and we bow our heads and close our eyes. On this men's day, in this season of Thanksgiving, before we ask for anything, Lord God, we want to thank you for everything. We, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning, Lord thank God, you, Lord. and breathing life into our lungs. Thank you, Lord. We want to thank you for all the blessings you bestowed upon our lives, Lord, for the things that we sometimes take for granted, Jesus. The clothes on our backs, the food on our table, the roof over our head, Lord. Yes. We want to thank you even for the trials and tribulations, Lord God, the hardships that you've helped us to endure. Because with every hardship, you bring us closer to you, Lord. Yes. We thank you for the dark days that we've seen in this lifetime, Jesus. For the wars that are happening around us, Lord God, because we know in darkness the light shines the brightest, Father. You will forever be our beacon, Lord God, and our lighthouse on the shore. Even when the seas get rough, Jesus. And we can't see the horizon, Lord God. We know that you're there. Yeah, God. We thank you for your presence, Lord thank God. Your you, omnipresence Jesus. in thank our life. You, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the forgiveness of our thank sins, Lord Jesus. God. Because we're all humans and we sin on a daily basis. Yes. By thought, by word, and by deed. But we're thankful that you don't see us for our transgressions, Lord God. You see us for the spirit you bestowed in us. We thank you, Lord God, for being the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things in our life, Lord God. And so we know when we're dealing through a storm that there is a beginning, yes. but just as surely there will be an end. Yes. And now, Lord God, we ask. We ask that you continue to lead us, Lord God, down a path of righteousness. And that you keep our feet steadfast on that path, Lord God. Oh, yes, God. Though this life, this society would like to show us things that distract us, Lord God. And would like to paint a picture of despair and evil, Lord God, and criminal activities. We ask that you please continue to show us the light, Father God. Continue to give us hope. Help us, Lord God, to remain strong in our faith, Lord God. To believe in a better day, Lord God, even though we don't see it today. To believe in brighter hours, Lord God. Even when the things around us tell us that it won't be. We ask, Lord God, that you give us a spirit of discernment, Lord yes, God. God. Yes. That you help us to know right from wrong. Yes. When the things that they put before our eyes murky those waters, Lord God. Yes. When we don't know real news from fake news and... We don't know the conduit for which it is given to us, Lord God. We ask that you let us know what's coming from you. We ask, Lord God, that you give to those that are less fortunate than we are. Yes, God. Before you give to us. Yes, God. Because on this Thanksgiving, there's some that have lost family members and friends and don't have a household, Lord God, to enjoy a meal, Lord. And so we ask that you give them all that they need to be whole, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you touch all those that are sick and shut in in hospitals, Lord God, and, and afflicted with all ailments and illnesses that plague the society today. Those pandemics and epidemics that we know now and don't know to come, we ask you to be the healer, Father God. Stretch your unchanging hands down from heaven. Be the great position that we know you to be, Lord. And as Reverend Barry read those names off, Father God, we ask that you be with our family members that have passed on, Lord. Now they look down upon us with, with full hearts to know that they ran the race, Father God, to know that they made it to the end, Jesus, and that they were forgiven of their trespasses and now sit on the right hand in the gates, Lord God. And one day we shall meet again and be able to say, we were thankful, yes. not only today in this Thanksgiving, yes. but for every single day we have in our lives. Yes. I thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to speak, Lord God, because I know it is not me, but it is you. Yes. 
I know my lips are parted, but your message comes through me, Lord God. And so that I ask that these words uplift somebody and give them what they need today to feel just a little bit better. Just a little bit better, Father God. This one day in itself won't solve all of our problems. It won't be the answer to all of our questions, but what it will be is an opportunity to say today is a better day. Yes. Today I will give thanks for those things that you've given me, Lord God. And if I continue to step into every day with that mentality, well then, there will be much better good days than there are bad, Lord God. We just like to say thank you, Father God, and I pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. And that name that is beyond all shadows of any doubts, Lord God. Because in that name, all things are possible. And I pray, Lord God, that you hear the prayers of everyone that is not here, all those that are in Zoom. Know their iniquities, Father God, and know where they need you the most. Pray this in your name and only your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Can everybody please stand for the scripture reading today? Amen. Today we'll be reading from Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 through 7. I'll say it again. We're reading from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. When everyone has it, please say amen. 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 As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. 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 Yeah, I can see it. I do believe there's a man right? Yeah. 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 Who are we? We are children of the most what? Yeah. So we ain't got no business being what? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. And all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I mean, I would have fainted. Oh Unless I had believed to see the goodness yes. of the Lord. Amen. In the land of the living. Yes. Wait on the Lord yes. and be of good courage. Yes. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Yes. Oh, but wait, I say, yes. on the Lord. Yes. For they that wait upon the Lord yes. shall yes. renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as evil. Yes. They tell me they shall run yes. and not be weary in their walk. The people of God shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Anybody glad to be here this morning? Oh, anybody glad you're in the right mind this morning? God say amen. 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 Well, we give God all the honor, glory, and praise this morning on this men's day. Yes. Give the brothers a big hand clap today. All the brothers in the house. And, uh, men of faith rooted and being in Christ. Okay. How about the pastor? Let's give God a big hand clap today. Now for us. Yeah, again, too. The mighty pastor. You see that bow tie he got on? Uh, Everybody don't have a bow tie like that. <laughs> <laughs> One day if I keep praying. Yeah. 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 To the first lady of the church, God bless you. Yeah. all of the clergy this morning, and in particular my sisters from Bethel, Reverend Clemens and Reverend Harvey, pray for everybody. Uh, to our worship leader this morning, Brother Fowler, give that a good job. Can you do a good job this morning? And put the good conviction. To this men's day quiet, huh? Aren't they something? Thank you, brother. Y'all set in motion. <laughs> Look at here. The Lord is good. Yes. Look at somebody and say, I know that's right. Know that's right. Yeah, he's good and he's good. I know that's right. And then to Lottie, Dottie, and to everybody. Well. I greet you in the matchless name of the one who walked out on the waters 
and calmed the raging sea. Mm, thank you, Lord. Do you know the man from Galilee? Yes. Yes. Well, look at somebody say, I know him for myself. I know him for myself. And we give God grace. Yes, well, thank you, Lord. my assignment this thank morning you, is to preach the word of God. <laughs> and I want you to go with me to the book called Romans. And there in the eighth chapter, just two verses. The 24th and the 25th verse. Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 24 and 25. When you find it, please stand that we might give reverence to the mighty word of God. You got it? You don't have to get say, here I come, Jesus. Okay. You got it? Romans, the 8th chapter, verses 24 and 25. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. The New International Version says it like this. For in this hope, we were saved. Yeah. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Yeah. Who hopes for what they already have? Yeah. But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. That's it. Yeah. Let the people of God say, Amen. 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 May the Lord have a rich blessing to the reading of His Word. And for the few moments that we shall solicit, request, seek your attention, consider with us simply my hope is built. My, my, my hope good. is built. Yes. Father of the Lord, we know all about the Father of the Lord, we understand Cheer up my brother service, Lord, by the power of grace divine, and let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine, until all the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, God, help me to preach yes, God. until I glorify you, for you are my strength and and my redeemer. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. speaking with someone and felt that I needed to encourage them in the Lord. I said something like, the Lord promised to never leave you, my brother. Never to forsake you. It's going to be alright. 
all things are going to work together for good. Yes. And they responded, well, I read my hope so. And I looked at them and said, no, brother, you have to believe so. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I hope so is a comment that folk make when they aren't sure about God's loving support uh -huh. and commitment. Uh -huh. I hope says, uh, so says, I I'm not sure if God is going to show up right on time. I'm not sure if he's going to supply all my needs. Now, I'm not sure if he'll really make a way out of no way. But I'd be happy if he does, so I hope so. I hope so is an admission that I don't really trust God. Uh -huh. I want to. I'd be happy if things work out, but right now, I'm not sure if God will fix it like he said he would. So I don't know for sure, but I hope so. I hope so is a weak and faithless response to situations that need help. Help that is beyond our own ability. I hope so is an unbelieving response to the call to have faith in God and to take him at his word. I hope so. There is a denial of God's ability to bless us and protect us, to guide us and to show us the way, to open up the windows and pour us out the blessings that we need. I hope so is a lame response to urgent situations. Well, I hope so. Faith is the belief that God will do what he says he'll do. Hope is waiting for him to do it. Mm -hmm. And love is knowing that God will never quit mm -hmm. on us or fail. Let me take a quick commercial break. First Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 13th verse says, now abide faith, mm -hmm. hope, yeah. and love. These three. Mm -hmm. right. But the greatest of these is love. Mm -hmm. And may I share with you that these three uh, uh, attributes are not only uh, very important, they abide forever, but the order in which they are provided is absolutely essential. Uh -huh. Faith must precede hope. Hope is what is required in order for love to kick in and give us what we need. But break it down, Elder. Uh -huh. The Bible says that now about, excuse me, uh, 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 faith is the substance of things yeah. hopeful, oh, yeah. but with no evidence. Right. In other words, whenever we pray and talk to God about something, we've got to believe it by faith right now. Yeah. Right. And then, I believe it's Mark 11, chapter 24, verse says, Therefore I say unto you, when you pray, believe that yeah. you receive it, you right. shall have it. In right. other words, when your eyes are still closed, faith says, I must believe now what I'm asking God for. So faith is now, what's hope? Hope is later. Yeah. Hope is the belief that I'm going to see the invisible substance that I believe in God for right now. Hope must have a foundation strong enough upon which to stand. Hope cannot exist without the foundation of faith. Hope stands on faith that faith is invisible, but hope says, I'm going to see the invisible later. I said faith is now. Yeah. Hope is later. And love is what? It's forever. Uh -huh. The word of God says that faith never fails. Faith never quits. Faith, excuse me, love never quits. Love never gives up. Now about it, faith, hope, and love. These three. And so as we deal with the notion of faith, again, it's the belief that God will do what he says he'll do. Hope is waiting for him to do it. And love is knowing that God will never quit on us, nor fail. Thank you, Lord. Nor forsake us, because he is love. Remember this. One more time. Faith is now. Hope is later. And love is... One more time. I said, faith is now. Hope is... And love is... Praise the Lord. That's my first point. That faith speaks, hope waits, and love never gives up. Right. Uh, I said faith speaks, yes. hope waits, mm -hmm. and love never, never gives up. Right. When someone says to you, God will fix it, he'll see you through, he's speaking or saying it by faith. Mm -hmm. Don't let doubt say anything. Mm -hmm. I hope so. Mm -hmm. Don't allow disbelief to have a say, I hope so. Mm -hmm. No, it's your faith that needs to speak. Faith has to say, God said it. So I believe it, yeah. and that sounds that faith must speak. Yes. Faith speaks and hope waits. Yeah. Because we believe so, hope is not a feeling we have, something we see, 
It's a belief that God is no shorter than his word. That's right. And we will wait until we see the goodness of the Lord. That's right. I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Of the living. Uh, Lamentations 3, noted 3 to 21 through 26. Lamentations 3, 21 through 26. If you begin in the front part of that chapter, you hear Jeremiah complain uh, to God and bemoan what God has called him to do. Yeah. It's important to understand that Jeremiah was called to go back to people that he was a child amongst to tell them that God getting ready to tear this whole thing up if y'all don't turn and return. Yeah. And they looked at Jeremiah and said, who in the world do you think you are? Uh -huh. We knew you when you were knee high to a grasshopper. Little boy, shut up! Uh -huh. Oh, and they threatened him. Talked about him. Some folk tried to kill him. He said, God, you deceived me. If I'd known what you'd call me to do, I never would have accepted this call. Uh -huh. And so in this third chapter, he's talking to God. God, you sent me out here for a bear to kill me. You, you broke my teeth. You tore my hair out my head. You, you done messed over me, God. God, everybody's against me. You done thrown me in the pit. You done put me in a hole. And then he gets to that 21st verse. Yeah. And he says, but this what? I recall to my mind. Yeah. And therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Yeah. That's the mercy yeah. that I'm not telling you with the Lord. Yeah. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says yeah. my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. Uh -huh. The Lord is good to them that weep for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Because we trust in God, we must make ourselves remember that the same God who brought us through last time is the same God that will bring us through this time. And in other words, if he did it before, oh, he'll do it again. If the devil wants us to forget and instead say, I hope so. No, God's compassion doesn't fail. His mercy is anew. Thank you, Jesus, every morning. He loves us. He's faithful. He's our portion. In other words, God is all that we need. That's right. And because he is, we hope in him. And the 26th verse says of Lamentations 3, uh, it is good that a man both hope and quietly wait for the Lord. Faith speaks and hope waits. Uh, Psalms 130 verses 5 and 7 says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. My soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. Amen. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Amen. That is, we are hoping the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with yes. him is plenteous redemption. Yes. Beloved, faith speaks, but hope waits. Yeah. Uh, love never gives up. Yes. Uh, can I say it another way? Yes. Faith stands up. Mm. Hope sits down uh -huh. and love will carry you through. Amen. Can I say that again? Amen. That faith stands up, yeah. hope sits down, and love will carry yeah. mm, you through. That's, right. that, that's my second point, if you please. Mm -hmm. Faith stands up, yes. hope sits down, and love will carry you through. A Psalm 119, verses 114 through 116 says this Thou art my hiding place, yeah. my shield. Thank I you. hope in thy word. Yes. Depart from me, ye evil doers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according unto thy word that I might live, and let me not be ashamed yes. of my hope. That's the word. The world will try to make you not believe in God's word. That's right. As a matter of fact, if we let them, they will make us doubt God's word. And not openly admit that we believe in the power of God. Mm -hmm. In hopeless situations, they'll laugh at us. Treat us like we're crazy when we hope against hope. That's right. When there seems to be no hope. When we stand on the solid rock of God. The scriptures say in verse 116, Uphold me according to thy word that I may live and not be ashamed of my hope. Yeah. In other words, sometimes people think you're crazy when you're willing to go ahead and believe God anyhow in any way. Some people think you've lost your mind when you're willing to stand on the word of God and believe God for a miracle. Some folks will say, this guy is crazy. Don't you see what she's going through? She needs to go ahead and do what uh, Joe White said, curse God and die, but the devil is a liar. Yeah. I believe in God. Yeah. I still believe in you because yeah. I know yeah. God can make the way out of nowhere. Yeah. So I'm telling you all yeah. the promises of God. Yeah. Somebody say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's all right. <laughs> this is what 
and uh -huh. weapons are formed against us. Uh -huh. We have to let our faith take a stand and speak. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. right. Faith has to say, no, no weapon formed against That's me right. shall right. prosper. Right. God will do what he says he'll do. Right. It won't prosper. It won't That's work. Right. Uh -huh. Faith takes a stand. Yeah. And says, I believe in God, and if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. And, and after faith takes a stand, hope sits down. As if to say, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to wait until my change comes. I'm going to wait on the Lord. I'm going to be of good courage. I'm going to have a sit in and both hope and quietly wait for the Lord. I wait quietly, refusing to let doubt or fear speak. Hoping and quietly waiting. Or like mama used to say, go on over there, boy, and sit down and, and shut up. Uh, the world wants you to get up and move from your blessed assurance. To start complaining and speaking words of defeat or doubt. Right. It wants you to give up and be ashamed of your hope in God. That's right. That's uh, don't be silly, girl. Uh, be practical, brother. Be realistic, man. Come on, you see what I see. Come on, let it go. Move on. It don't take all of that. But don't you let them make you be ashamed. Faith speaks and takes a stand. Faith stands up and says, I'm Christ, the solid rock I stand. And even though you want me to move off my faith, run away from what I believe in me, what I'm waiting God for. Hope says, sit out here and wait and see what God's got for you. Sit out here and trust that the Lord will make a way out of nowhere. The Bible says, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will what? Run from you. Too many folk are running from the devil. Look at somebody say, what you running for? You, you need to sit out and, and wait on the Lord and be a good person. Come on, somebody clap your hands. Oh, oh, waits. It sits down right in the midst of unbelief and fear. And love never gives up. That's right. Love will carry yes, it will. you through. Yes, it will. Through doubt, through, through fear, yeah. through discouragement, yeah. through disappointment. Yeah. Love never gives up. It will carry you through, through the storm, through the night, That's right. through the sickness and That's through right. the pain. That's right. Hope will try to make you see that things are hopeless and yeah. see that things are not going to work out and to see that there's no hope. They had us all twisted up over the election, told us it was going to be a red wave, told us they were going to do this and do that, told us it wasn't going to work, told us that folks were going to vote, and we looked up, and all the polls were wrong. We looked up, yeah. and we saw that God was still in charge. We looked up, and we knew God was still making the way somehow. They just do that at Obama B. They raised $400 billion trying to beat that brother. But look what God, God said, I don't care how much money you got, Romans 8, 24 and 25. Yes. We are saved by hope. But hope that is seen ain't no hope. For what a person seeth, why are you waiting for it? But if we hope for that which we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? The New International Version again says it like this. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. In other words, saints, hope is not based on what we see. When somebody says, I hope so, what they're really saying is, I hope it happens, but I'll know it when I see it. Yeah. Right. See, some folk got Missouri faith, and they won't believe it until they see it. <laughs> this brother was talking to his girlfriend one day, and he said, girl, I don't care what they say. I don't care how well they describe me. If you don't put your hands on me, it wasn't me. Yeah. You see, some people try to pull out a, 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 a monkey trick on them. They try to say, if you don't see it, uh, it ain't real. But I stopped by here to tell you that. As people create things in an invisible realm. What in the world do you mean? That's right. That's right. Yeah. God is the great, eternal, immortal, invisible God. Amen. Walk with me now. Stay close. And when God creates your blessing, it begins from where he is. Mm -hmm. And because God is invisible, mm -hmm. 
God begins to mold and shape what he's going to give you in an invisible realm. Uh, walk with me. That's one of the reasons why some people never get what they ask for. Because while it's invisible, you give up on it because you're not willing to wait for it. Yeah. But so you got to sit down and acknowledge God does what God says he's going to do. And faith is substance that you cannot see what he's trying to say. This is substance. And what faith is, is believing in this while it yet not can be seen. In other words, what faith is, is the belief that God has already shaped my blessing. And I can't see it yet. But I know it exists. It's substance, huh? but invisible substance. Huh? But if I wait on it, huh? if I wait on God, huh? sooner or later God's going to show me. Huh? And that's what hope is. Huh? Hope is believing huh? that even though it's invisible, I'm going to see it by and by. Huh? And so if I wait on the Lord huh? and be of good courage, why good courage? Because you got to be strong enough huh? to believe in that which cannot be seen. Huh? When folks are calling you crazy, when folks say, we believe so much that we're willing to wait on it. Mm. To sit in the midst of doubters and haters. We pre he prepared a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Hope dwells in the unseen. Our hope lives in the unseen. It depends upon unseen things. Knowing that even though the world wherein we exist was made from things that do not appear. Again, faith is the substance of things hoped for, Shiloh, yes. but evidence unseen. Well. Hope demands that we look not at the things which are seen, mm -hmm. but at the things which are not seen. Mm -hmm. The Bible in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, the 16th verse says, For though the outward person perish, the inward person is renewed yes. day by day. Yes. What light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us in exceeding weight and glory. Mm -hmm. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the yes. things which are not seen are eternal. Let us break that down. Yes. So the outward person perish. You might be going through something. It might be hurting you. Some things are so hard they even break our heart. Some things we go through don't make no sense at all. But I've discovered that though the outward person's going through something, something else is happening on the inside. You see, God can't make you strong without putting a heavier weight on you. You see, sometimes we ask God for things that we know not what we ask. The Bible says that tribulation worketh patience. In other words, God make me more patient. And then what we're asking God to do is put more trouble in my life. And as you start to get through trouble, you realize I've seen this before and trouble in my way. I got to cry sometime. But when well, I'm looking back now, yeah, that's all right. Jesus will fix it after a while. In other words, with this outward experience, though I'm going through this pain, though I'm going through this trial, though I'm going through these issues, though I'm facing things that I never thought I'd have to face, dealing with things I never thought I'd have to deal with, baby, I'm going to let you know that it's doing something on the inside. Sometimes God will take you through something to prepare you for the next round. Sometimes God will give you a burden so that you'll learn to be able to carry it. They, they tell me that a weight lifter, if they want to get stronger, he's got to lift a heavier weight. If you keep lifting the same weight, you'll never get stronger. God, I want to be stronger. God, say, here comes weight. God, I want to be patient. Here comes tribulation. God, I want to be better. But here comes a problem. You see, if you never had a problem, you would know that God could solve them. He is a burden bearer, a heavy load sharer. And what God knows how to do is put a weight on you. But when you realize that don't this weight on the outside is making me cry Thank you. 
He accused the devil of it. It's actually God preparing you. Somebody say that. Look at somebody and say, though it hurts on the outside, God doing something on the inside. So the outward man perish, the inward man is renewed day by day. That's right. So this light affliction, which is but for a moment, yes. working for us an exceeding yes. weight of glory. Yes. I'll break that down. When we're going through something, mm -hmm. it gets all of our attention. Uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, when something's hurting you real bad, uh -huh. while you're going through it, seems like it ain't going to ever, ever Jesus, end. I know. Oh, when something's Jesus. in your yes, sir. body hurting you, when something's in your heart messing with you, when your emotions are being tried, it feels like it ain't ever going to end. But this right affliction, which is but for a moment, but when you, when you look back, once it got through, you realize it wasn't nothing but a moment. Yes. See, that it came to pass. And, and, and what we need to understand is that but that works for us an exceeding weight in glory. What would you say? As we begin to learn the trouble in our way, we got to cry sometimes. But if you just wait on the Lord, it will pass. Yes. Look at somebody say, it came to pass. Yes. If you see things in our life, they come. There are things in our life, they come. But as we trust in the Lord, we realize they pass. Because they came, come on, to pass. Tell somebody it came, it pass. See, we're going through something. But then that 18th verse says, For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are only Temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes. Yes. Faith is the belief and the reality of unseen things. Yes. Hope is believing that the unseen shall be seen. And we must be willing to understand that to walk by faith and not by sight means you must look at the unseen. In other words, what that means is that when I ask God to do something for me, yeah, yeah, yeah. when I ask God to, if he would fix something, if I, when I ask God if he would take care of something, I, I must believe and ask him to, to, to uh, thank him. Uh, 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 let me say it differently. I got a letter from the church, from Shiloh. And this letter thanked me for coming. But it came last week. They thanked me. They said, oh, you put a word on us. They want to thank you for stopping by. Thank you. And what they did, they thanked me before we even got here. And, and, and that's what extending our faith means. When you tell God thank you for something you ask God for before you can even see it, what you're saying is that I believe that you understand. And so God, I want to let you know, thank you for healing me, God. Lord, thank you for helping me with this child. Lord, thank you for opening that door. Thank you for opening up that window. When you spell God, thank you. When your eyes are still closed, when you made the request, is yet in the invisible. What you're doing is acknowledging I'm not looking at the scene. See, the devil will try to get you caught up. Yeah. You ain't seen nothing. Yeah. That ain't yeah, gonna yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah. Look around you. You don't even see nothing moving. Uh -huh. Bible, the, the devil say you don't even feel better. Right. You go up to that altar and you believe God for a breakthrough. Yeah. And you don't feel nothing. Yeah. But you got to believe in the unseen. Yeah. You got to look at what you can see. Yeah. I said God is invisible. Yeah. And God knows how to bless you. Yeah. But you got to wait on him. Yeah. That's why I hope sits down. Yeah. Hope says I ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Hope says I'm waiting on the Lord. Yeah. Hope says I don't care how big you are. Yeah. Bad you are. Who do you think you are? I'm going to sit right here and wait on God. I said, faith stands up. But hope says down. And love, love will carry you through. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody cry, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've got time to wind this up. So we, we look at Romans 5, 1 through 5. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 
And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation works of patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope. And hope will make you not be ashamed. That's right. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Mm -hmm. Walk with me for a few more moments. We build patience upon tribulations, upon trouble, upon trials, difficulties, struggles, and suffering and disappointments. We build faith. Upon patience, we build experience, the awareness of seeing something before and knowing that God made a way. <laughs> the witnessing of God being no shorter than his word and always being on time. Uh -huh. We build upon patience experience. But guess what? We build upon experience hope. Hope must be built. Folk who have not gone through anything have no patience. Uh -huh. Tribulation right. builds right. patience. Right. Right. People who have no patience right. won't accept that there's something to learn in every tribulation. Right. Right. I won't remember what God has helped them to endure. I recall this to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. Fear won't let you remember. Doubt will block your memory. People will act like they have never seen what they're going through before. Just because things get hard, listen, it doesn't mean God ain't still God. Can I say that again? Just because things get hard, it don't mean that God still ain't God. I don't know if that was pulled around, but I think it did. And when we go through tribulation, in the Lord, when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, wow. with the Lord, we gain patience. Yes. And with that patience, we are able to build experience. Yes. As we learn to count it all joy when we fall into diverse temptations. Uh -huh. Knowing and learning that the trying of our faith worketh patience. Uh -huh. And when we let patience have her perfect world, work, uh, work, it builds experience. Yes. Wanting nothing. And upon that frame, mm -hmm built of tribulations and patience and experience, upon that we build hope. Tribulations work of patience. Patience work of experience and experience work of hope. Hope must be built. Uh, not on you, not on your faults, not on your words and your deeds. They're not strong enough to build hope. That frame is too weak. Don't build it upon others. No, no, don't do it or what they think, or what they say, or what they do. That's right. That frame is too shaky. Mm -hmm. You've got to build your hope <coughs> on things eternal. Right. You've got to build your hope on Christ. That's right. Jesus came down from heaven through 42 generations to give us hope. Jesus died on the cross and then got up from the grave so that we would have hope. Right. And then after showing himself to the disciples, he ascended into heaven and said he was coming back. So we would live lives full of hope and be hopeful. Faith speaks and cries, stand up for Jesus. Who wait for his return and sits down in the presence of God knowing that God will do it. And love never gives up. Love carries us through. I don't hope so. I believe so. And so as I go to my seat, almost Jeremiah 17, 7 summarizes it all. It says, blessed is the man, the woman, boy, or girl who trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. You see, I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. I lost faith in people who said they cared. In time of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I let some blessings slip away when I lost my focus and went astray. But I thank God I didn't lose everything. I lost possessions that were so dear. I lost some battles walking in fear. But in the midst of the, my struggles in the season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith. But most of all, I never lost my praise. And I learned that when you're sitting there, you got to learn how to praise him. While you're waiting for the invisible to become visible, you got to know how to praise God from who all blessings from. You got to praise him all creatures here below. And with the angels, you got to praise him with the heavenly host. I've learned to praise God. Praise is what I do. I praise him in the morning. I praise him in the midnight hour. I've learned to praise God until my praise shows up. Until my change comes up. I love to praise God. Sometimes I gotta say, feet. Don't fail me now. I gotta say, please. If you please, I want to dance. And when the spirit of the Lord comes upon my heart, I dance. 
says in Jeremiah, I believe it's 27, 17, but don't hold me to it. I'm going to be a Bible scholar one day like Reverend Ford, but I'm working on it. <laughs> the Bible says, blessed is the man who places his hope in the Lord. Yeah. Who curses in the man who puts his trust in man. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm convinced that there are people who've been hurt because they trusted people to do what they couldn't do. My best friend in the whole world was my mama. I love my mama. She was always there for me. And I felt that my mama was always going to be there for me. So I discovered even, even my mama, she couldn't go with me all the way. And maybe there's somebody here today as we stand all over the church. Maybe there's somebody here who needs Jesus for the pardoning of your sins. He'll never let you down. If you're here and you've never asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, come on, do it today. Receive him today. If you're here, whether or not in person or virtually, and you need a church home, I want to invite you to join a wonderful church, a family church, a church that will wrap their arms all around you. Come on and join the church. Put in the chat. I want to join Shiloh. But put in the chat. I want to be saved. Amen. Yes. I yes. promise you, this will be That's the best day of your life. That's it. Let the people of God yes, say that. Amen. Amen. But then there's a third plea. It's for those who need, who need prayer. I don't know who you are, but what happened to you was never supposed to happen to you. What you went through, that wasn't right. And the devil's trying to hold that memory over you. Trying to use that memory to stop you, to impede you. There's somebody here, you're stuck, you've been stuck. Then you've been more time marching, you've been moving, but you ain't been going nowhere. And so God told me to come by here and open the door to the church for somebody who needs to be delivered from a memory. Somebody who needs to be able to get over and through a stumbling block. Somebody's got something that's blocking your progress. Yes. And you've been trying to press your way, trying to move forward, but you take two steps forward and you feel like you're going three steps back. I want you to come right now to the altar. There's somebody going through something that's causing you to wrestle with your faith. Oh, you believe God, you know God is real, but something's been holding you. Something's been trying to tell you you can't, but you can. Trying to tell you you aren't, but you are. But you're going to have to press your way today. Yeah. There's somebody been waiting on God. Do I come by here to tell you God's been waiting on you? Wow. And so if you hear my voice, and I've rung your doorbell, yeah. Mm -hmm. I want you to come to the altar right now. To tell that person next to you, excuse me, I... I, I gotta get down to the altar. I, 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 I need what God's got for me. I, there's a miracle waiting for me. I, I need God to flip the lights on my faith on him. If you're here today, come right now. Come in the name of Jesus. Come and get what God has for you. Come on, let God fix what's hurting in you. Let God deal with the broken heart in you. Let God come all the way into your heart and fix it. If you're here right now, I want you to come right now. Come right now. And I don't mind. I, I'll 
beg you to come up. I'll plead for you to come up. If you need God to do something for you, I want you to come to the altar. Come to the fountain so rich and sweet and cast your poor soul at the Savior's feet. You see, some of them are putting their toe in the water, but they said plunge in today. God wants all of you. God wants you to plunge in. God wants you to come to the deep end of the pool. He says you've been in the shallow long enough, but what I need to do for you, I got to get you in the deep. Come on. I want you to come right now. The devil says wait for another Sunday. Wait for another day. Wait for another preacher. But God sent me here to tell you to come right now. Come in the name of Jesus. I, I plead that you come. I, I beg you to come. If you need him, come right now. If you need a breakthrough. If you need God to fix you. If you need God to heal you. If you need God to deliver you. Come right now. I know he can. And I believe that he will. But come on. Come on, come on. Come on. There's, there's two more people. There's two. There's two more people need to come. There's two more. There's two more people need to come. There's two more. Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. There's another person need to come. Come on in the name of Jesus. God become his empty fountains, empty vessels. God, somebody needs to be filled. Somebody in the name of Jesus needs to be touched. Somebody is dealing with a broken heart. Somebody has a memory. Somebody feels poor. Somebody feels trapped. Somebody's in the midst of a mess. Somebody needs God to break in and to fix it. And so God is in the name of Jesus. Somebody's got a child that's about to make you lose your mind. Somebody needs peace. Somebody needs the joy bell. Restore in the name of Jesus. And so Father, we come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace. Oh, God, in time, in a, in a time like this. And so, Father, I lift every person in the name of Jesus who's made their way to this altar, to this altar, Lord. And I plead, I plead the blood, I plead the blood of Jesus upon you, Lord. I believe in the name of Jesus that God has already begun to do what you need him to do. But by faith, we got to say it's already done. And so right now, I want you to speak by faith. I want you to say it's done. It's finished. But whatever that thing is, don't say it out loud. Nobody needs to know your business. But whatever thing that is, I want you to bring it to the forefront of your mind. And I want you to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I want you in the name of Jesus. If it's a person, if it's a child, ask God to deliver you. If it's a financial stress, receive in the name of Jesus that which will handle the business. What is it? Is it something that somebody did to you and, and you can't see the shaking? God told me in the name of Jesus, he breaks the power of cancer of sin. He sets captives free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood avails for you and me. In the forefront of your mind, whatever it is, if it's something that you need God to heal, I want you to claim that it's healed in the name of Jesus. If it's something that needs to be delivered, thank God for delivering you in the name of Jesus. If it's something that you need God to do, 
Thank God for doing it in the name of Jesus. And now by faith, no evidence. Can't see nothing. But I want you to believe it, that God has already done it. And to extend your faith, I just want you to begin to say, thank you. Just begin to keep saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. 